For all the disadvantages of folding phones, there is the great advantage of Flex Mode. Flex Mode brings a variety of tools that help the user experience. These tools provide new ways to use a phone that would not be possible otherwise. In this video, I want to focus on the positive side of things and to be more specific on Flex Mode for the Z Flip 5. Let's talk about the Flex Panel. This feature is activated simply by folding up the screen up to a certain point. Some apps have their own Flex Panel and these usually provide the best experiences, but just in case the app doesn't have one, Samsung has a generic one that's used. I will give it to Samsung, they did a really great job with the generic one because it actually does adjust to the type of app that you're using. For example, if you're using Spotify, you'll get the track bar to let you seek through the song. Uh, you also get to move forward on the song by 10 seconds or to the next song. And if you're on something like YouTube, although it does have its own, you can opt to use Samsung's and it also has the same features of the track bar and also skipping 10 seconds or going to the next video. However, YouTube's own flex panel options are pretty great and I actually would recommend using that one over Samsung's but by default that's how it works. The only setting that's really available for the flex panel is actually in the advanced features and labs section and it basically just is a toggle that lets you have the button to show the Samsung's version on apps that either don't support it at all or on apps that have their own and you want to switch to Samsung. By itself it's not that important of a setting but with the help of the good lock app you can make this setting more useful than it is by itself. Once you download the GoodLock app, you can go ahead and download the multi-star portion of it. From there, you go to the iHeart Galaxy Foldables. And from there, you can find the toggle for Rotate Portrait with our best, which basically forces any app to be able to run on portrait mode. Once that's toggled on, you can go right below it to Rotate with our best. And there you can choose which app you want to apply this to. So in my use case, I apply it to Netflix and with that, I'm able to rotate Netflix to watch the video on portrait mode, which by default, Netflix only lets you watch it on landscape view. And from there, you can bring up the menu to have the same track bar as you would on YouTube. You can also skip forward 10 seconds and mess with the brightness and volume. I know this is not going to give you the best viewing experience, but in a situation that you don't have a stand, this is a good alternative. Especially if you're close enough to the phone that the size is good enough to watch, then you can really take advantage of it. Obviously, you have to step back. It's going to be a bit harder to watch since the screen real estate that's going to be used is pretty small. The flex mode panel also has this one sleek feature that lets you start a split screen session right from the panel itself. You don't have to fumble around looking for the split screen sessions or use any other sort of method to get it opened. And because of the Z Flip 5's extra tall aspect ratio, Using split screen on it is actually not too bad of an experience. Now one of my favorite ways to use the flex mode is with the camera. This provides the most unique way of using the feature when compared to the standard phones. Flex mode improves the versatility of all camera modes, especially for vlogging, selfies, and night shots. For vlogging, being able to use the main sensor on the phone provides a big benefit when compared to using the front-facing camera. The main sensor on the Z Flip 5 is going to be way better than the front-facing camera on pretty much any other phone. This will let you use the highest quality output possible on the phone. And for those thinking they could just use the main sensor on a standard phone, think about how hard it's going to be to frame your shot without some sort of accessory to one, hold your phone up and to show your screen either like a mirror uh, accessory or something to that effect. With the Z Flip 5, you have the cover screen, which has been improved since the Z Flip 4 and actually provides a really good preview window. Another great feature that goes along with the flex mode is the fact that Samsung has an option to shoot at 9x16 ratio. This allows you to take video in landscape mode while the phone is sitting in portrait mode and further lets you take advantage of flex mode. The only downside is that you'll be limited to 1080p. However, that's going to be more than good enough for most content out there. Also, having the built-in tripod outweighs the limitation of resolution. This feature is probably most useful when traveling and not wanting to take a full camera kit, especially for content creation. One of my favorite pieces of advice that I've heard from many photographers is the best camera is the one that you carry with you. And when comparing the form factor of the Z Flip 5 to a regular camera, DSLR or mirrorless, you're gonna see that it's gonna be a lot easier to carry the Z Flip 5 with you. And it's gonna provide a lot of versatility. For night shots, the big benefit comes in keeping the phone as still as possible. So you basically have the built-in tripod because you get to use the phone on flex mode. 
And this lets you put the phone on a steady surface and let you take a longer exposure without any movement from your body or hands. Of course, there's always a limitation of the subject in the photo moving, but at least from the stuff that you can control, having this phone steady on a surface is gonna perform better than holding it on your hands. And here are two night shots with the Z Flip 5, one being handheld and the other being set down in flex mode. The result is a higher quality and more crisp photo when using flex mode. And when comparing the Z Flip 5 to a standard phone, you're going to require some sort of accessory or object to keep your phone straight up while you're taking the photo. Whereas the Z Flip 5 is all built in. And let's not forget hands-free video calling. Whether it's because you're on your desk and you're working so you need your hands on a keyboard and mouse, or you just don't want to carry the phone while you're on the video call, it's really up to you of how you want to use it, but the option is there. Oh. And before I forget, there is this one other unofficial way of using flex mode, which I use quite a bit because I'm always forgetting a stand and I don't carry cases with kickstands. So it's pretty useful. And that is actually using it as its own stand for watching videos on landscape. Now you can adjust the angle. It's basically going to be flat, but for when you want to watch a full screen video and you don't have a stand, you just slightly fold in the screen, you know, as little as possible without it being too small where it flips back. And from there, you can enjoy the video pretty easily. And with enough practice, you'll get the angle just right where you keep the phone steady and still minimize the amount of crease that you're getting on the screen. When it comes to the flex mode, Samsung really stands on its own on this one. And the reason I say this is because Samsung created their own generic flex panel to use with other apps that haven't created their own. Whereas the competitors don't seem to be as polished as that and kind of leave it up to the app developers to create a flex panel. Maybe this will even out in the future where either the phone manufacturer creates their own flex panel or more app developers just start creating their own into the app. So we'll see how things turn out in the future. But for now, Samsung is the leader in flex mode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.